This is not good. Look at there's a hole in the gas tank. Oh my gosh. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. I am super excited today because today we are back in the shop and I am talking Walbro. But before we get into the video, if you are a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment with in-depth tutorials, well, you have come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload about two to three times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. So, I don't know if you're like me, but I am pretty stuck in my ways. If I find something that works, I don't like to change it. I pretty much stick with it and tell everybody that's the best way to go. But times are changing, and I guess sometimes we have to change with it. But thankfully, there are some companies like Walbro that are trying to keep up with how bad our fuel is anymore. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do, what kind of fuel stabilizers you use, what kind of um, non-ethanol gas you use. It just seems like we cannot keep up with what it is tearing up in these machines. So although my shop gets in over 2,000 pieces of equipment every year and I see hundreds of two cycles and four cycle small engines, I didn't know about this stuff. And that pretty much means that there's tons of you out there that don't know about it either. Thankfully though, Walbro got a hold of me and they wanted me to know about it. And now I'm gonna give that information to you. Now, if you have tore apart a few small engines in your lifetime, you have definitely come across a Walbro carburetor. They have been one of the leading innovators in small engine carburation for the last 70 years. They are a global company and they are definitely trying to keep up with the times with how bad the fuel is these days. So the only way you're gonna convince me is for it to be tried, true, and work. So we're going to find one of the nastiest pieces of equipment I have sitting around the shop, something that's been sitting a long time, really nasty. We're gonna clean it up, put some of this Walbro carburetor stuff in and see how it works. So we are going to be using some Walbro carburetor cleaner with the Easy Pump Spray. It is made in the USA. We are also going to be adding fuel stabilizer to our fuel. It is scented. Wait a minute. It's scented. I gotta know what this smells like. It's got a pine tree on it. That smells like men's aftershave. Um, so obviously if you spill a little on you, don't worry about it because you're good to go. All right, let's start breaking some of this open. So to combat how bad the fuel is on all of your rubber components, Walbro came out with new primer bulbs. Um, it's got this black polymer primer um, that I guess lasts longer and is supposed to, you know, be great in helping the longevity of your priming system. So let's open these up and check them out. Um, for the old one that's on all the, uh, the old Walbro stuff, it is a part number 1885661 on the push-in primer bulb with the two prongs, the suck and blow, you know. Um, this goes on tons of stuff. I mean, I even put it on stuff that it's not supposed to. I, I'll put it on a steel backpack blower, I don't care. Um, the part number for that one is a 188-570-1. And it's just like the old ones, it's just got a way better, I mean, it feels like really good rubber instead of that hard plastic. Let me get one of those out so you can see the difference. I've got two different ones here, actually. This one probably came with some carburetor order, but that's hard and you can just tell that thing's going to, to blow as soon as it sits for a year. This one, this is what I use all the time that I get from Walbro. And it's a hard plastic. It's nothing like this nice rubber feeling one though. I mean, it's totally, di I, I mean, ugh. Yeah, this one pumps way easier. So I'm imagining that this tiny one is just the same. So that's awesome. Okay, Walbro also sent a bunch of spark plugs. So I'm gonna use this in uh, the unit that we'll be working on. But the most awesome thing is the new spiral diaphragm, metering diaphragm for the carburetors. So this is my first time ever using this and I'm gonna go ahead and open this one kit for you so you can see what's inside. Comes with a new um, meter to tell your uh, clearance on your needle pin, needle lever pin. And it comes with instructions and this is supposed to be the last metering diaphragm you'll ever have to use. So let's open this thing up and check it out. 
So it comes like this with this little piece of cardboard on because you actually, whenever you go to put it in, and I'll show you when we're on the carburetor, you actually mount everything together, put your screws in, and then you're gonna pull this cardboard piece out to keep it all together. But I'm gonna go ahead and tear this one apart just so you can see what's inside. I'm gonna take that off. It's got a gasket. And then it's got like a, well, that's different. It's like a weird drum piece. That's, that's pretty neat. I'm not even sure what that is, but that membrane is, is really, really different. Wow. Next, it has the spiral metering piece that actually has this really light spring inside. And it's supposed to last a lifetime. And then another gasket for the other side. So that is cool. So without further ado, let me go find something really nasty and throw it up here on the bench. All right, Toby. You gonna be in the shot? You gonna say hello to everybody? This is Toby, our shop kitty. And he is spoiled rotten. Okay, come on, scoop, scoop. All right, so I've pulled out one of the nastiest pieces of equipment I have sitting around the shop. I mean, it's an auger. You only use augers every once in a while, and it's something that I just am like, I'll just fix it when I need to use it again. But once you see inside this tank, you're going to just be shocked. You can only imagine what the carburetor looks like. So I have my little light here that people were asking me about from my, one of my last videos, and I actually, it's really cool. You can move it any way you want. It's super, super bright. I got it at the Dollar Tree for one buck. So I highly recommend getting one of these because they're super awesome. But we are going to use it so I can show you exactly what this tank looks like inside. Ew, that's gross. Now that end down there is completely full of goo. So we're gonna have to probably clean this out pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this carburetor off real quick. Things just got worse. This is not good. Look at, there's a hole in the gas tank. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm still rolling with it and I'll figure out something else about a gas tank in a bit. All right, so we got the carburetor off. Let's get into it and see what's going on inside. Oh, that's stuck. That's stuck bad. That's hard. And it stinks. You can hear it. You should not be able to hear a metering diaphragm like that. So yeah, you know that that one's bad. All right, so we've got a K20 WYL kit. We are going to go ahead and change out um, these gaskets and the screen. And actually, it looks pretty good inside. I am going to use the Walbro carburetor cleaner to give this a good spray down, get this needle out of here. And uh, we might be able to just throw it back together with these new parts and see what it does. Needle out of here. Ooh, that was stuck. So, yeah, we're going to give all this a good spray down with our Walbro carburetor cleaner and uh, put it all back together. All right, we're going to pull out the new new pieces out of our K20WYL, but really all we need is the needle and because we're switching out the lever and these two gaskets. So you can actually get it individually, but I just keep it as a whole kit, the K20WYL. So we're going to use this one and this one and save all that stuff. 
put our new needle in. Put our spring right back on that little nipple. I'm gonna open up this new kit with the new spiral metering diaphragm. And it's got this new lever in it. Now the difference between the old lever and the new lever is that this new lever actually has this little lift up here and the old lever came out straight. So that's different. So we're going to get our lever pin, put it through our new lever. Swoop on down here and get this needle. I'm gonna put our screw back in. Tighten it all back down. Wow, that's just crazy looking. And that looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our new gauge here and see, and it's supposed to, as you come over it, just barely hit, hit the top of that. So, I think that it's actually up a little too high. Now, the majority of ones I get in, you barely have to do anything to them. Yeah, that would probably leave the gas open all the time. So, to adjust it, I'm going to push down on this side as I push down over here because it is up just a little too high. So, let's that side down as I push this just a little bit. All right, let's try it again. There it is. Barely, barely hits it. That's where you want to be at, right there. Okay, we got that part done. So we can go ahead and throw our new screen in. My hair cut the screen. All right, we're going to put our new screen in there and get it started just pushing it evenly and then you can tuck it down just a little bit. That's good. And we're going to put our gasket back on. Our diaphragm. This side on. All right, so we've pulled out a, our new Walbro Spiral Long Lasting Diaphragm, and um, you leave it together in this cardboard, and you have the, the side that says top facing towards you as you're putting it back together, and you will just set it directly on the two little nipples. And we're going to put our purge base back on. Line the holes up. We're going to be using our brand new Walro Long Lasting Primer Bulb. And we go to put our bracket back on. We're gonna get our screws in there. Oh. And we're gonna get them started. but we're not cinching down on it yet. We just want to keep everything in place. So we're just barely going to get them in there. And now that we have everything not cinched down, but just, you know, barely tight, we're gonna take this off and we're just going to slide the little cardboard piece out. And now we can tighten our four screws back down. Super simple. All right, so I'm not gonna lie. When I picked this thing out of the back, I had no idea that there was gonna be a hole in the gas tank. I just saw the inside, knew it was gross, figured it would be a good one to work on, 
but unfortunately this gas tank has to be replaced before it is able to be used. So I will order one and replace it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this carburetor back on, make me a little makeshift gas tank, and we're gonna see if this bad boy runs anyways. So did I just throw a steel trimmer gas tank on this thing to see if it's gonna run? Yes, yes I did. All right, it is time for the money shot. Let's see if it's gonna run. because a kill switch and a fuel tank, that's not a big deal, but I'm gonna be able to sell this baby for bucks. Well, thanks again for tuning into Chicanic. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and a subscribe. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic or Chicanic.com or on Instagram as The Real Chicanic where you will see things that I do not post anywhere else. Thanks again, have a great day.